Target intraocular pressure is the upper limit of the IOP estimated to be compatible with a slow rate of progression of glaucoma in order to maintain a good quality of life. There is no single target IOP level that is appropriate for all eyes. It needs to be estimated separately for each eye of every patient. There are several factors that we consider on our choice of a target IOP. The level of IOP before starting treatment, if we have a case of glaucoma and the IOP was not high before starting any medication, then our target is a low one. On the other hand, if the IOP is high before starting treatment, then our target is a high IOP. You need to consider the central corneal thickness when you're thinking about the IOP levels. Although several tables and figures have been published, there is no standard monogram correcting application Applanation IOP measured for central corneal thickness. Life expectancy. If you diagnose glaucoma in a young age, then the life expectancy is long. Then we go for a low IOP. On the other hand, if the life expectancy is short, we can go for a high IOP. But uh, keep in mind, old age is a risk factor for glaucoma progression. Then, the amount of damage when you first see the patient. If you see the patient with advanced glaucoma changes in the field or in the OCT or in the disc, then you can go for low IOP. On the other hand, if the amount of damage is minimal, then you can go for a high target IOP. To evaluate the amount of damage, we can depend on the field of vision and on disc evaluation. There are several methods that we can check the field with. The first one was published back in 1993. I'm going to take one of the important and easy things to do is the mean deviation. If you, the mean deviation is blue 6, it's some mild glaucoma. If it's between 6 and 12, it's moderate. And if it's more than 12, it's a severe glaucoma. This part is more complicated. We can skip it. Then the second point is to check the central area. If we have in one of the two hemispheres a sensitivity less than 15 decibel, either up or down, this is a moderate glaucoma. If less than 15 up and down both, then this is a severe glaucoma. If one of the values in the central 10 degrees is zero, this is a severe glaucoma. For disc changes, we can depend on the disc damage likelihood scheme, and if we have areas of zero, either small part or very extensive, this is a severe glaucoma. The second system is the Canadian guidelines. They defined early glaucoma that cases with early field changes with changes in the mean deviation less than 6, with a cup disc ratio less than 0.65. Moderate glaucoma, where we have a significant field changes in the upper or the low and the lower hemisphere, but not affecting the central 10 degrees, with a mean deviation between minus 6 to minus 12, and a cup disc ratio 0.7 up to 0.85. Then they define severe glaucoma as visual affection in the field within the center of 10 degrees, or mean deviation worse than 12, and a cup disc ratio higher than 0.9. The American guidelines define mild, moderate, severe, 
depending on early glaucoma where we have a characteristic changes of the disc with normal white on white field moderate glaucoma where we have characteristic disc changes and abnormality in the one of the two hemispheres and not affecting the central 10 degrees on the other hand if there is affection of both hemispheres or if there is affection in the central 10 degrees then this is a severe glaucoma then other risk factors is the rate of progression we can get this information after following the patient for a year or two or if we check previous investigations of the patient and we are treating him now then we can know how fast the case is progressing then other risk factors should be considered like thin central corneal thickness like old age like elevated IOP or like pseudo exfoliation several glaucoma clinical trials showed these factors for example the ocular hypertension treatment study showed the importance of risk the, the risk of having old age and the risk of having a thin central corneal thickness the early manifest glaucoma treatment showed the importance that if we have high OP the risk is higher if there is pseudo exfoliation the risk is higher for glaucoma progression and also old age is a risk factor the advanced glaucoma intervention study showed that if the initial pressure before standing any treatment if it was low then over the years the chance of progression is less while if the initial pressure is high then over the years the chance of progression is more in the normal tension treatment study migraine is a risk factor and presence of disc hemorrhage is a risk factor other risk factors include low systolic and diastolic blood pressure that will result in low ocular perfusion pressure it was found that low diastolic perfusion pressure less than 40 milligrams mercury is associated with higher prevalence of primary open angle glaucoma also it was found that nocturnal mean arterial pressure 10 millimeters mercury lower than daytime mean arterial pressure may predict progression of normal tension glaucoma and increased risk of visual field loss other risk factors vasospasm type 2 diabetes it is believed that microvascular changes in the optic nerve head may contribute to the greater susceptibility of the optic nerve damage a meta-analysis of 47 studies concluded that diabetes mellitus is associated with increased risk of glaucoma and may be associated with elevated IOP. Other risk factors, myopia. Large cross-sectional epidemic studies suggest that persons with myopia have a higher prevalence of open-angle glaucoma than those without myopia. It is believed that axial myopia, eyes with axial myopia, have a weaker scleral support at the optic nerve with greater susceptibility to glaucoma damage. Other risk factors include positive family history. Now, how low should we go? The Canadian guidelines give us this range depending on the type on the stage of glaucoma while the American guidelines give us these figures all these are seen here in this slide if we have mild glaucoma then according to European glaucoma society we should go for a level less than 21 or 20 percent reduction 
the Canadian guidelines, we want a level below 20 or 20% 20 reduction, while the American guideline will go for 18 millimeter mercury or 25. Why we are having two different targets? If the initial IOP is high, say 40, then if you choose to go to below 21, this is more reduction of pressure compared if you choose to go to the 20. So we choose the one that will give us more reduction. On the other hand, suppose we have a patient with 22, then you choose to go for 20% reduction. In case of moderate glaucoma, the limits are 18, 17, 16, or 30% reduction. In case of CV glaucoma, the limit here is 40%. Here it is 30% or 14 millimeters mercury, and here it is 12 millimeter mercury of 35% reduction. So we have either a percentage or a level, and you choose whatever low. Then the European Glaucoma Society in the edition of 2003, they added this factor that 3% more reduction per decade and 3% for each risk factor with the maximum 12. But this is not included in the last edition of the guidelines. If we come to glaucoma suspect, the Canadians will go for a pressure below 24 and the American the target pressure is below 22. In case of normal tension glaucoma, the Americans will go for a 30 to 35 percent reduction. At the end, it should the target IOP should be re-evaluated regularly and should be adjusted if there is progression of the disease. Thank you for your attention.